Welcome back to another episode of The Outside Looking In. Uh, once again, we're here, my co-host Dre, and uh, we'll jump right into it. First, we did the NFC South and the NFC West on our last videos. If you haven't seen those, go check them out. We kind of talked about those team situations. And for now, we're going to do the NFC East. This is probably the conference that's done the least, the NFC least, which is, you know, it's called last year. That kind of makes sense. So uh, we'll start off with, let's start off with the Giants, man. Um Obviously, they didn't really make any moves, uh, per se, so it's not too much to talk about on that note. But one thing I do want to talk about with them is Saquon Barkley. I mean, I feel like it's a make-or-break year for him. Uh, obviously, I, was number four pick, number two pick in the draft? I don't remember. I think it was two. but it's somewhere definitely top four. I think it was number two. But whatever pick in his draft, it was very, very high pick. Obviously, had two um, season in the injuries uh, already. I finally had an okay year last year, but this is make-or-break, man. You can't spend a, a draft pick on a running back that high and he doesn't pan out, at least make it to the second contract. Looking like he may not. Um, his name has been in some trade rumors. Don't know if those true or not. Those are true or not. But it's make or break for him, man. Uh, they're going to need him. Obviously, with Daniel Jones, this is make or break year for him as well. So those two, that backfield is just an entire make or break season uh, for the Giants. Other than that, man, nothing really changed. So it's nothing, you know, much to talk about. Yeah, I think I think the only other thing that's been reported is that uh, James Bradbury is available if a team wants to trade for him. But if no team wants to trade for him, then they'll keep him. But the biggest thing, I really think they're kind of actually playing it smart, even though they got a new a new coach, a new GM, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I really wouldn't be making any big moves in a sense until you know for a fact what you're doing with Saquon and Daniel Jones. So basically give him another year. You still have Kenny Galladay there who you gave big money to last year and didn't catch a single touchdown pass last year. You know, you still got uh, Tony, the rookie from last year. I believe they still have Darius Slayton. Mm -hmm. So they've got pieces. I think the Jaguars signed Evan Ingram, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So they got to get a new tight end. They, they got, uh, they got Ricky Seals. Ricky Seals Jones. They got him. Okay. So, That's yeah. So, him. I mean, they've got, they've got enough pieces to definitely – it's definitely not a contending roster in a sense – but it's definitely a roster that is decent enough to evaluate Daniel Jones and just seeing, and you're not really evaluating Saquon. You're just trying to see if Saquon can stay healthy and if he can get back to his rookie year, in a sense. If he can do that, he'll get his second contract. And Daniel Jones just got to play better. That's and also, I think uh, new coach Brian Flores, oops, I just had a Bill Belichick moment. I mean, Brian DeBall will be, you know, good for Daniel Jones. Gets a, basically a, a year proof with them. And he got a new OC who's, obviously done well in, uh, with the Bills and Josh Allen. So I'm not going to call Daniel Jones Josh Allen tight, but they're both a little mobile, you know, can throw the ball. Obviously, Daniel Jones can't throw it like Josh Allen. So the ball's kind of had, you know, he's run some quarterback runs with Josh Allen. I wonder if they, you know, use that with Daniel Jones. He usually can run well. Uh, you took it out of my mouth. I was literally just about to say that. So, <laughs> so we'll see what that does for him. I, I think this is just a make or break for him. Uh, if he doesn't, doesn't pan out under the ball. His career is probably basically over. He'll just be a backup at best. So um, that's really it for the Giants, man. We'll move on to the Washington Redskins commander slash football team, whatever you want to call them. Um, I just got a notification. Oh, never mind. I thought I thought Leo Collins signed somewhere, but he did not. But yeah, commanders, obviously the big news out of, you know, that um, team is Carson Wentz, man, the good old Philadelphia Eagle who robbed the Colts for a first-round pick, and then the Colts was like, uh, we got to get up out of here. So the Colts traded him as well. I think they can get up to a third-round pick if he plays or meets whatever. So, um, And he's also on a one-year deal with the commander. So what you think on that? So they're the wild card <laughs> because – and I'm going to say the same thing like I said last year because technically there are two ways you can look at this. If you go and look at just the stats – Carson Wentz didn't necessarily play bad last year. Mm -hmm. 27 touchdowns, seven interceptions, I believe over 3,500 yards. Um, so you're like, okay, that's a decent year for a quarterback. Not necessarily like top top five, top 10 quarterback, but middle of the pack, top 15, I'll, you know, a, a team, I'll take that. It's just the mere fact that those seven interceptions, if I'm not mistaken, like six of the seven all came in the second half. It's gonna and be they crucial. all came at like crucial opportunities where it's like you could have just taken the sack or you could have just thrown the ball away. You know, it was when he got into his hero ball type, which mm -hmm. is some of the stuff that we as Eagles fans would, we loved and hated for, because when it does well, like it, you get a tremendous result, you know, a touchdown, big play, stuff like that. But when it does bad, like it goes bad. 
So it all depends on what wins that the commanders get and can they overcome, you know, because he's going to he's going to make a hero mistake at some point. So if they can overcome it, they'll be fine. Chase Young's coming back off of a ACL injury. Mm-hmm. So depending on how that. he returns, that defense, you know, that defensive line should be, you know, right back to where they left off in a sense. I think they're okay at linebacker. I really think their biggest need is secondary. Uh, and then on the offensive end, they lost their backup McKissick, who they really use as uh, as a change of pace a lot. So I don't think they're I don't think they're in a terrible situation. I really think their only bad thing last year is that. Taylor Heineke is good, but he's more of like a backup that can come in and get you a game or two, but not necessarily play a whole season. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what Wentz can do, but they're they're a toss up for winning the division or not, depending on how the rest of this offseason goes for the rest of the teams. But as of right now, they're a dark horse. Yeah, I think they're just going to be middle of the pack. Maybe when, they can win between six and ten games, I believe. I won't. It's going to be somewhere middle of the pack. Nothing special I, with them. I agree. Uh, they won't be bad. They won't be great. They're not like a real threat, but they'll just be a solid team. You're going to have to, you know, beat them. They're not just going to – you can't walk over them. They just won't be a super trash team. So, now nah, speaking of trash teams, let's move on to the Cowboys. Uh, <laughs> I just – everything in my soul hates the Cowboys. Let me get that out the way. Just, Preaching to the choir. I just can't stand them. Um, only thing I got on them is I think – well, I think it's a prove year for Lamb. Um, they drafted him while they had Cooper, Gallup, uh, Cedric Wilson. They still drafted him. Uh, high in the first round, which was kind of confusing to me. But obviously, they're going to make him the number one guy this year, and he's going to have to show that. Uh, They traded Cooper to the Browns. I did to get a six-round pick or something out of that. Um, Obviously, didn't want to pay him $20 million uh, because they're paying a running back with one knee, $20 million. So um, the Cowboys, I think they're just kind of stuck. They're stuck with the Dak. not going to say stuck with Dak because his deal is actually kind of team-friendly after all these quarterback deals. But that Zeke deal – um, they're kind of stuck with that at the moment, so they really can't make any moves. Um, I know you want to touch on the, the Randy Gregory and the, and the defensive <laughs> side of the ball, so I'm gonna let you cook. So, look, I'll let him talk most of this. The NFC East, man, this is his conference, he knows more than me. I'm sure he hates these teams more than I do. So, yeah, you can go. Oh, I hate every single one of these teams except for <laughs> one because there's only one team in this division that matters, but we'll get to them in a moment. Mm-hmm. But for the Cowboys, in a sense. I was in heaven when I got that notification saying that Randy Gregory uh, basically spurned them Mm -hmm. and went to Denver. Because, you know, at first the whole thing was, oh, they're going to lose Randy Gregory and they're going to lose Demarcus Lawrence. But then they ended up restructuring Lawrence's contract. And in a sense, they gave him a new contract. So I was, and then they said that they were bringing Gregory back. So I was like, oh man, they, you know, they're bringing their defense back in a sense. Uh, But then just like that, he goes to, you know, he goes to Denver, and it's all because they put that language in his contract. And, and I agree with Gregory. I understand that, you know, granted, there's no income tax in Texas, and he's going to now have to pay income tax in Denver. But it's the mere fact that, you know, you went through all this and everything, and then at the last minute, they're like, but just in case you slip up, we want some of this money back. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, nah, I'm not I'm not for it. The league, if he slips up, the league's going to take money from him anyway. So it's like now he's losing money to the league oh. and losing money to his team. Nah, Randy, don't do that. Go to Denver and go play, do what you want to do, all that kind of stuff. I'm cool with that. On the offensive side, CD being the number one now, CD's a good wide receiver. But here's why I've always had kind of like a, a reservation with CD, because it's the fact that he played in the Big 12. And we know that the Big 12 is not known for defense. Now, he is a great wide receiver. Don't, don't get me wrong. He put up numbers against Alabama when Oklahoma and Alabama played. But it was also when Oklahoma was kind of getting blown out and, mm-hmm. and they really needed to, you know, move the ball and get down the field and all that kind of stuff. So now he's the true number one. So he's going to draw all the coverage because they did not re-sign Cedric Wilson. Michael Gallup is coming off of an ACL injury, so you don't know how he's going to be when he comes back. It all depends on who they get in the draft and things like that. But I'm just, you know, it, who knows what's going to happen? You know, he and Dak didn't really have the same type of connection that Dak and Amari had. Even though Amari would disappear at certain times and things like that, he, Dak and CD just don't have that type of connection that he mm-hmm. and Amari had. We all know the running situation. Tony Pollard is the best running back that they have, but they have to play Zeke because yep. he's getting paid all that. Mm-hmm. So Cowboys ain't going nowhere. I see them winning. Because I will say this, as of right now, and no bias, they have the best quarterback in the division consistently. 
There are times Wentz could probably play better than Dak. That will happen at some point this year. But on a collective, they have the best quarterback. Usually you have the best quarterback, you're going to win. So I'll give them nine, ten wins uh, because I think depending on what we do, I think if we don't do much, I think it'll be between Washington and Dallas. But I still think we'll win the division. But Dallas ain't going nowhere. It's another year of no Super Bowl for them, no play. And no speaking no of those Eagles, um, I don't have much to say on those guys. But I will say they released Fletcher Cox, and I got excited. Um, I've been wanting Fletcher Cox on the Saints for at least the last five years. Obviously, I knew it couldn't happen. We already in cap hell, hand quotation, so that can't really work. So if we would have had to get them, it would have to be via trade or if they released them and you want to take a discount. But why would you take a discount when you're one of the best defensive players in the game? So when they released them, I had hope, like a 1% hope. But they resigned him, unfortunately, for me. He went back to the Eagles. Obviously, that's big for him or and for them. So that's all I got on the Eagles, man. I just wanted the Saints to get Fletcher Cox, but I knew that was never happening. But I had yeah, some hope. I don't know how many years in a row you uh, would send me trade offers for Fletcher hey, Cox. Hey, man, somebody got to get it done. And knowing good and well, I turned every single one of them down. Hmm. So the thing is, for us, we just got to – I'm interested in what we do with these three first-round picks. Now, I know we're talking more offseason than the draft, but I know one of the rumors was that we were potentially looking to use one of our first-round picks – on uh, the outside linebacker from Michigan, but he just recently tore his Achilles at his pro day. So that's really going to hurt his his draft stock and his draft status. And then for us, potentially, I don't know if we'll take a flyer like that again, because if everyone remembers, we used a second round pick on Sidney Jones, who was supposed to be the top corner of his class, and that didn't really work out for us. So I don't know if Howie wants to do that again, especially with the first round pick. But with three first round picks, we need... At first, we need a pass rusher, but we just signed Hassan Reddick. So maybe pass rusher isn't as big of a need as, as it was, but we definitely need linebackers. Um, I, I specifically think we need to definitely get a, a secondary player, whether it be a corner or a safety, but I definitely think we need one of them in the first round. And then I'm going to throw a little curveball out there. I would be fine if we actually signed Julio. And not because Julio is going to be, you know, top of the line. Mm, geez, my camera even disagreed yeah, with you. You keep on rocking. We almost <laughs> done anyway. It's just rock it out. So the thing is, I really think that Julio would be beneficial for our team, mainly because it's just a veteran on the team to help Devontae, you know, go forward with what he is. I still think Devontae is still the true number one of our team. But mm -hmm. with Rager not being as consistent, um, Watkins is more of a deep threat, but hopefully he can take that next step and, you know, utilize more of the route tree this year. But I think Julio will be good. You know, he was good for AJ in a sense, even though he didn't play as much, mm -hmm. AJ still had a great year, still do things. You never know what type of teachings and learnings that happens, you know, during training camp practice, stuff like that. So I think that'd be good for Devonte. Uh, but for us, the biggest thing is what do we do with these draft picks? I don't think we make any more big splashes in free agency. But at the end of the day, we're going to win 11 games. We're going to win the division. Mm. And we're going to potentially make some noise in the playoffs, depending on what type of, you know, next step Jalen Hurts takes. Because if not, we get a quarterback next offseason. I promise you that. Yeah, this is his make or break here. We will be, too, if it goes bad. So, yeah, man, that'll wrap up the NFC East. Let us, let us know who y'all think is going to win a division. Don't say the Cowboys in those comments. I might block you. No, nah, not really. But, man, you got to wrap up the NFC East. Be on the lookout for uh, all the rest of the divisions, man. We're going to get through all of them, all eight of them, you know, hopefully by the end of the week. So be on the lookout for those. But once again, we are out. You can't see my fingers, but they up here somewhere. Fly, Eagles, fly.